How do you know when it's time to get your pepper plants out into the garden? Whether you started from seed or you're buying from a garden center, you want to make sure to get that plant timing right when your peppers go from protected environment to outdoors. The day has finally arrived when I can plant my peppers in the garden, and so I'm going to share with you the three factors that go into my decision on when to plant. After that, I'll take you with me into my garden as we get these peppers planted, and I'll also share with you some timing tips and some lessons I learned this year that may help you with timing your own pepper planting. Factor number one is timing. I plan to plant my peppers usually between two and four weeks after my average last frost date. They will go in a couple of weeks typically after tomatoes do. That's because peppers are more of a hot weather crop rather than a warm season crop. They like it hotter than tomatoes do. And so for that reason, they are going to be planted a little bit later. This timing parameter of two to four weeks after my average last frost date really has less to do with the frost and more to do with making sure that the peppers get to live in an environment that will hasten their growth. While they may not die in over overnight temperatures in the 40s, they are definitely not going to like it very much. And you may find that putting peppers outside too early may stunt their growth. For that reason, not only do I want to make sure that I have no threat of frost in the forecast, but also that the temperatures have risen enough where the peppers are going to enjoy their new home. That brings me to factor number two, and that is temperature. And I'm talking about temperatures outside, temperatures at night especially, and even soil temperature. When it has been two to four weeks after my average last frost date or after my last frost has passed, I'm looking at the 10 day temperature. And what I'm looking at is overnight lows in the 50s. I really want them consistently in the 50s, if not the 60s. In fact, the University of Minnesota says that nighttime temperatures below 60 can weaken the plant growth of peppers. So the higher the better when you're dealing with those borderline nighttime spring lows. Most of the time when we have temperatures that are consistently at night in the 50s and 60s, and then daytime temperatures are in the 70s and 80s, typically the soil temperature is going to follow suit. But soil temperature is something that you may wanna keep in mind 65 or above is best. And that's because the plant is not only affected on the top, but it's also affected in the root zone. And we wanna make sure that when we plant those roots into the garden soil, that the garden soil is warm enough for it. We want to take into account not only the temperatures above ground, but also the temperatures below ground because we don't wanna plant the roots into cold soil. But like I said, if we really focus on the nighttime temperatures staying in that 50s to 60 degree mark, we're usually going to be okay as far as soil temperature. One thing you might wanna do is if you have mulch on the garden area, you might wanna pull that mulch back a couple of weeks ahead of planting your peppers. That way the sun has a chance to warm that soil and the roots will go into a warm environment. Factor number three is making sure that your pepper plants are properly hardened off. These are hardened off because I've actually had them in the greenhouse from the time that they started sprouting with the cool nighttime temperatures, if I didn't heat the greenhouse, I would take them back inside. But the sooner I got them out into the sunlight, the better, and they grew so fast for it. So these actually have been hardened off because they've been in the greenhouse. I've taken them outside to be able to get a little bit of a breeze. They're ready to go. But if you started your pepper seedlings indoors, make sure to give yourself a week or two to gradually introduce them to the sunlight, to the wind, to the environment before you plant them out in your garden. In these two raised beds here, I'm planting my bell peppers. I'm trying several different varieties of bell peppers this year just to see how they compare to one another. I love trying different things. And I'm also trying these companion combinations as well. Carrots are grown in this bed. We've got some cabbage in this bed. Carrots and cabbage in my garden typically will be harvested in early July. And so these will eventually, the peppers will be able to overtake this area once those cool season crops are harvested. So what I'm doing here is I am mixing up a mixture of organic rev to be able to dip the roots into. And I usually go for about a 50-50 mixture, although I'm not, I just usually eyeball it. What I found that organic rev does is it helps to get the roots off to a good start. And I've used organic rev every time I've potted up these peppers on every stage of the journey 
and I've been very, very pleased with their growth. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to soak this transplant here, this root ball in the organic rev mixture while I dig the hole. This one I'm getting ready to plant is Carolina Wonder. I've never planted it before, but it's supposed to show root knot nematode resistance, which I think I've been having issues with in my bell peppers or any peppers in the past. So I'm not quite sure. I know I have it on my okra, but I just thought we'll see, we'll test and see if that's the issue, maybe it'll do better. As you can see, I am planting within the Garden in Minutes Garden Grid system, which makes it really easy if you're using any type of square foot gardening design, made it really easy for me to plant these carrots and keep them where they're ne they need to be because I knew ahead of time I'd be planting peppers here. Next, I'm gonna be planting Emerald Giant. This has been the best performing pepper that I've ever had so far, but I was having a hard time finding the seeds until this year I found them at True Leaf Market. In fact, I included this variety in the Beginner's Garden seed collection, which has a lot of my favorites, so I'm really excited to be able to grow it again this year. And just to tell you the other ones that I'm planting, this one is Wonder Bell. I've never tried it before, but we're gonna try it, see how it does. And then this one is Intruder. This was recommended to me by a gentleman who gardens in Texas, which is a similar gardening climate, even a little bit hotter than I am here in Arkansas. So I'm gonna see how it does. And then I'm doing all the same varieties in the bed over there as well, just to compare to see if there's a difference between the beds that have companion planted with carrots versus cabbage. The one thing I do need to keep in mind is I'm pretty sure that this bed gets a little bit more sun than that bed. So we'll have to keep that in mind as well. Now I'm working on this second bed and I'm realizing, you know, I don't think these cabbages are gonna last till July. They are looking like they are almost full grown. So I'll probably be able to take them out pretty quickly and give the rest of this room to the growing peppers. Then because I love companion planting, I'll have to figure out what else I can grow with these peppers. I'll tell you, these ladybugs have been my savior these last few weeks when these peppers couldn't go outside. The aphids were descending on them in the greenhouse. I brought them outside a couple of pretty days and I put them next to my flowering arugula and ladybugs like the next day started showing up and laying eggs and I started seeing all their babies. And I don't know that I could even tell you that they're is an aphid on here. I see their castings. I see that there's evidence they've been here, but they're nowhere to be found thanks to these ladybugs. This particular method is a method of planting called relay planting. And what that means is that I planted these cabbages, I think late February, maybe early March, with the intention that while they were growing right before they were able to harvest, I would plant peppers and then the peppers would be planted in the midst of them, which can be a little tricky, as you can see, trying to squeeze them in, but they're only growing together for a very short time because their, their growth cycle overlaps just barely. So they'll grow together for a little while, same way with the carrots over there, until the first crop is harvested and then the second crop is able to take over. I've done this a lot with garlic and peppers, but I don't think I'm gonna do that this year because I've got some other places for them. I don't know, I might change my mind when I do the rest of my peppers. 
but garlic and peppers has been a good combination for me because we harvest garlic at the end of June. So relay planting peppers with garlic has been a good combination. Of course, if you don't harvest your garlic till the end of July, like some people do, that probably wouldn't work for you, but it works well for me here in the South. I got these eight bell peppers planted. Next, I'm going to give them a good drink of water and then I'm gonna turn on my Garden in Minutes garden irrigation system just to give the whole area plenty of water to get them settled in. These are not the only peppers I'm planting though. I also have a bed of paprika peppers because I love to grind my own paprika, use it in my kitchen year round. And then I'm also gonna be trying some specialty peppers that I've never tried before. Bell peppers like chocolate bell and candy cane. And I have some other ones that I'll be planting in a raised bed behind me. So lots of experiments with peppers going on this year. If you wanna follow along and see what the results of these experiments are, be sure to like and subscribe for more garden videos as this season progresses. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you on the next video next week.